So, hello and welcome once again with, uh, here in Los Angeles, California with Hori and Gracie, the uh, grand, uh, Grandmaster? Grandmaster, yes. Grandmaster Hori and <laughs> Gracie, um, who is my, uh, my martial arts instructor. I've uh, been training with him for um, God knows how long. It's been a long time now. <laughs> right, it's been a long time. <laughs> but I th thank you so much my for pleasure. taking the time. It's great to be here. Um, you know, this is, it's interesting because most of the video interviews that I'll do are are really business uh, business based, and I'll talk to I'll talk to a business uh, kind of a thought leader in business and ask him how do you market more on the internet, or how do you um, you know how do you raise money, or how do you do different types of things like that? And I know you have a lot of experience like that. And I'm, I, you know, whenever I come to train with you at the academy, I look and I think, oh, I want to give, I want to tell Hoyan how he could do the newsletter, but you're doing it better than I could ever tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him about building the brand, but you build brand better than anybody I know. So, <laughs> so you've got all this business knowledge, um, but I think what. Um, you know, what I'd like to find out from you and, and, and discuss with you a little bit is, is some of the philosophies that you have with the jiu-jitsu and how they map across into, into life and into business and, and thinking. And I, uh, what would you say in all your years' experience, I mean, you've been doing jiu-jitsu all your life, what would you say are the most important or a couple mm -hmm. of the most important principles that you've learned from jiu-jitsu that have helped you in, in life or handling life or handling, with, handling life? I guess that the fact that uh, Jiu-Jitsu teaches you to be calm under a stressful situation. And a lot of times as we experience different, you know, scenarios or, or phases of our lives, we find ourselves, you know, ups and downs and ups and downs. And when things are going up, it's exciting, it's, you know, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure and so on. But sometimes when the situation in life goes down, I guess Jiu-Jitsu gave me the ability or the level of comfort not to stress out and panic under those circumstances. I think that would be a very important aspect of it. And of course, the discipline, the same discipline that one needs to regularly train, to practice, to perfect himself, and to hone their techniques, uh, is the same kind of discipline that I would think a person that's going to be successful in business or some entrepreneur uh, in event, on a business venture, one must have a certain amount of discipline to stick to it, even though apparently right now things are tough and difficult right now. But if you put the, the, the technique to work and, and discipline and keep yourself on that path, it might help and it should help. So it's a, the, 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 and that's what's fascinating to me is, you, you know, the, even being a student of yours for years is, is what the art that you teach is, uh, really teaches people the ability to relax under tremendous pressure. Yes. Under tremendous pressure. And have you, do you find that you're able to successfully take that into your life and you're able to relax under that, and the pressures in life and you're really to, able to make that connection? Because sometimes I think about it. It's like, you tell me, like when I train with you to relax, relax, when the, and it's very difficult to relax in a fight. And then I, I, in my own life, it's like, okay, breathe, relax, all the things you teach me. Do you find that you've been able to map that across fairly easily? Do you have to think about it? Do you? You know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for so long, Chris, that I don't, I can't think separate from jiu-jitsu. It's just kind of become one to me. You know, sometimes I, I look back and then I analyze and I say, wow, I was really keeping the thing under control. I don't plan on being calm. It just happens to be part of it for me. I think it's kind of natural at this point. Um, and just, you know, be able to stay calm under, the circum some, some under certain circumstances is just become kind of a natural thing. You know, of course, there's always the, the, the opportunity sometimes to kind of do something out of, uh, of our emotion and stuff like that. And that's when I take a deep breath and say, hey, that's not the right way to do it. Kind of take your time and just, you know, take one step at a time and make the right decision. And uh, yes, I think that I was able to fortunately be able to transfer jiu-jitsu from you know the theory of it and the techniques that I've been practicing all my life to daily life, I think that's what brought me this far. See, I think if people if people could just get that one lesson uh, about to take that deep breath and to relax and to you know because there's so many people that have uh, life or business they look at it as being a struggle. In fact, uh, Richard Branson uh, from the Virgin Company, so the multi-billionaire, said that mm -hmm. while he was building Virgin, it was a constant struggle to survive. Mm -hmm. And here, you know, you and I were talking earlier about your father who fought the longest match in recorded history, a, a, a fight, yeah. somebody beating you up. And what was, what was the time you said it was? Three hours and 40 minutes. Three hours and 40 minutes. He was in a fight. Non-stop, one round. Non-stop, one round fight. Yes. And you can be relaxed in a situation like that? That's possible? Well, it's not a question of being relaxed. It's a question of you being alert and knowing exactly where to put your energy in. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you spend your energy at the right time, but if the, there's times that you're going to have to relax. And being able to relax and choose the moments to put a little more pressure or take off the foot of the accelerator, that ability to choose the right moment is important. I'm sure he, he had to do that, otherwise he wouldn't last. 
So and and mm -hmm. and in life, how do, how would you map that across in life? Like if we if you look at some of the situations, where were some of the situations maybe in your life where you had to mm -hmm. know where to put a little more energy or know where to relax or know where to back off, dude? Um, there was a time during the Gracie Academy that uh, you know the previous one before we had the one right now that uh, I was going through a very financial, a very difficult financial time. And the money was just not enough. It was too many bills and not enough money coming in. I'm sure everybody watching can relate to this too. So, yeah. yes. And on top of all that, I had uh, a pipe broke in the locker room and flooded the whole academy. And one fine day, I, I walk into the academy to start teaching class on a Saturday morning and water is coming out on the front of the building on the street. So all mats are flooded, everything was great. So you forced me to spend a couple of weeks without teaching classes. I mean, there's no money coming in. Landlord at the business is knocking on my door, say, hey, where's my money? The landlord in my house comes by and play with my kids you know, on, a, on a weekend, and he says, look, if you don't pay your rent in, you know, by the end of the month, I'm going to evict you and your children out of here. So that is a very stressful situation for very anybody. Stressful. And to have the person just threatening you like that. But, you know, I can just go crazy and panic and, I don't know, rob a bank or do something like that, or just say, hey, take a deep breath, relax, and let's see what will happen, what kind of opportunity will present itself. I don't claim to have the solution for all things by all means, but I think the fact that you can keep a cool head is a first step in terms of solving the problem. Because a lot of times, the biggest problems we have, we cause the problems to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you can keep yourself calm under a very stressful situation and just say, hey, you know, there's nothing I can do. My dad used to say, if there's no solution, it's solved. Okay, if the guy's going to evict it, the guy's going to evict me. Let's see what happens. And then invariably something would turn around and just somehow things would work out and he'd give you another week and this and that. And before you know it, people start buying more videos and somehow the thing would work. So it's kind of that go with the flow type attitude. Yeah. And don't panic. And don't panic. The trick is not to panic. And That's if you're not panicking, what, you, what are you doing instead? If you're not panicking, then you're... Mm. You just have to believe that there's a solution coming around the corner. You That's can't lose hope. And that's, you know, somebody's about to, sometimes you, Chris, in class, you're about to choke me out. My main thing is that I can't lose hope. I got to stay cool. And, you know, the choke is coming, but I'm sure there's something that's going to happen right now that's going to facilitate. And before you know it, if you don't panic, you can just create this space in the last minute to get out. Well, I hardly think that I've put you in that position. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hear what you're saying. So, but now, what's interesting about that is that you have, the, what, it seems to me that part of uh, what gives you the ability to have that faith or have that belief that you're going to win. And for me, this is really the mindset of a champion, you know, the mindset of somebody. Um, and when you, you know, when you look at the, your, your brothers or you look at Hoyce or the Hickson who fought is what they, they go in, they have this mindset where they're going to go in and they're going to win. That attitude and that mindset, I know, and you taught them both. You know, the, being the older brother, you taught both the, the you know, the, you've taught the fighters in the family. I mean, I'm sure it's, it, it trickles down from you. That mindset of a champion, I mean, when you map that across into business, I think that's really truly what makes success. Absolutely, yes. I came to America without, you know, knowing anybody, without barely speaking the language. I didn't come here to fail. I just, I knew I was going to make it happen. I didn't know exactly how. I just, somehow I'm going to figure out a way to do it. Because Americans like what's best. I was confident that jiu-jitsu was the best form of self-defense in the world. And I didn't know exactly how things are going to happen, but I liked the challenge and just kind of play by ear and just keep going with the flow. And before you know it, a chance happens here, an opportunity happens there. And I just push it and just before you just relentless, keep on going and things will happen. Now, the, uh, the attitude that I'm, uh, the, the, where you, that, that relaxed attitude, that go with the flow type attitude, I really want to get to the bottom of that because for, we, we, you have a lot of techniques that you teach that allow you to be relaxed in a situation because you know where to go. What about in business and life? If you don't have a series of techniques for knowing how to move forward, how do you still have that belief or that faith? Does the belief or faith come first? And I know, that, and, and you know, you've taught me when we go and we roll at the academy and whatnot. You've always said, "Relax, relax, relax." The first, that's the first thing that you have to get. Does the the attitude of relaxing and going with the flow come first, or do the techniques to know how to get out of any situation come first? Um, I think that in my case, the fact that I was introduced to techniques that help me deal with problems, that was the catalyst that gave me the confidence not to stress out, in my case. Because I've been doing jiu-jitsu all my life since I was very young. And again, like I said, by just being involved on a fight, on a struggle, on a sparring session, or training with somebody, or whatever, just to get comfortable with the idea of that, you get so close to danger all the time that you start learning that it's not the end of the world if you find yourself in a bad spot. 
I'll give you a quick example here. In building the less academy we have here, in the new one, there was, I had a scheduled group to put the stucco on the wall. I don't know if I mentioned this story to you yeah. in the past or not. I had a, the stucco company was going to come in and patch the wall on Saturday morning. They came in to look at the place on Thursday. He said, look, tomorrow we're going to come here and set it up. And uh, on a Friday, they are setting up the whole thing. And he said, tomorrow, Saturday, we're going to stucco this place. I needed to put a certain beam, a wood beam, across the, the, the main entry to hold the glass doors. I find that out on a Friday afternoon. The guy say, if you're going to put the beam, it's got to be tonight because Saturday morning at 7 o'clock, you're going to be here. So I start looking for a beam and, you know, what does it have to do with jiu-jitsu? You know, absolutely nothing to do with jiu-jitsu. I'm looking for a beam to put on the wall so I can set up the door frames. But I just said to myself, I'm going to find the beam. I mean, I have to find the beam. There's no option for me not to find the beam. The, the possibility of not finding the beam did not, I didn't allow that to get into my mind. I told myself I was going to find the beam. So I start calling around, and I found this lumber house. They say, look, after three phone calls, they say, look, we just so happened to have one here. Somebody ordered one a couple of weeks ago, and they, they never picked it up. So I talked to a friend of mine who had a big truck. We picked up the beam. We dropped it off. Great. At 4 o'clock, however, on that Friday, I realized that the brackets, the beam is so heavy. It's a 16-foot beam, by, you know, big, big like construction, a heavy-duty one. The, the brackets needed, I needed a certain special kind of bracket to hold the beam. And uh, I bought, when I got the beam, I had two special brackets. But the one I needed, because there would be no space to put the beam over the top, I needed a special reverse beam, something, a, a bracket, a special kind of bracket. I had two, but one of them needed to be exchanged, and I just didn't exist. So at 5 o'clock, you know, I called the company, the manufacturers, the beam, they're closed. It's a holiday on Monday. You can't get anywhere. I just really think. So I said, I'm just going to have to find this beam. I don't know how, but I'm going to find the beam. There's a lot of times in my life I find just having faith and just jumping with it. It's amazing how many times I have been blessed or helped or the, God, or the hand of God just comes in and helps, whatever you want to call it. It was just amazing. So I go in to Home Depot the local Home Depot here in uh, Torrance, on Hawthorne. And I walk into the Home Depot. I ask the woman. I had a, a beam that I wanted in my hand, but I needed the same thing with a reverse flop or whatever it is. And I come into the receptionist. I said, you guys have this? She said, no, we don't carry this. This is the industrial kind. We only have the home kind. But you can look around. So I said, all right. So I have start looking around in the bracket section. And I look and I look and I look. And I find the beam. There's one beam in there. I mean, not a beam, uh, the bracket that I'm looking for, the, the supporting bracket. And then I start looking, and I find the bracket. It's exactly the same one. And uh, now Home Depot doesn't carry that kind of bracket. It's not <laughs> on their inventory. I bring it out to the front. She looks at it, tries to put the little scanner thing to find out. She says, look, this is not in our inventory. Somebody must have brought it in and left it here. We don't have it. I'm not going to charge. You can take it home. Now, is that crazy or what? Now, that's jiu-jitsu didn't teach me that because I have a, I, I'm accustomed to push the thing to the limit. When it's not, it can't be done anymore, I push a little bit more, and somehow it works. I think that that kind of faith that I somehow got that a little bit from jiu-jitsu by not losing hope. If I'm getting choked out and I don't lose hope, there's a chance to get out instead of just giving up. Try a little bit harder, you might get out, and you get out. And I got used to that concept of just not giving up. For me, nowadays, fun is to accomplish the impossible. If something is doable, it doesn't tickle me anymore. If say, it can't be done, that's what really makes me excited about that. <laughs> We're doing the UFC, people are saying, oh, you can't do it. It's against the law. I invited Chuck Norris to be the commentator. And Chuck is saying, no, hold on, it's not going to work. I remember you told me the story. Yeah, that's I said, Chuck, I would like you to be the commentator on the first UFC. No, it's, it can't be done, man. A tournament with no holds barred. It's impossible. It can't be done. I said, Chuck, it's going to happen. <laughs> I was just like, for me, it's already a done deal, you know? Uh, so the, the, now I've heard a couple of things. I've heard the, mm. the, the mindset of it's a done deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. That's right. Um, and, also, so, and it's that faith and the belief in making it happen, but also that the ability to relax under, uh, under tough circumstances. So those, those, both of those things go hand in hand. Um, and I, I'm still, you know, you, you, in jiu-jitsu, this is where it's, uh, I find it fascinating. It may be just be the place where jiu-jitsu and personal development or professional development are maybe the tools that I teach. 
where, where or the tools that you find in a lot of personal development seminars kind of come hand in hand because part of what it seems to me gives you the ability to have that faith and belief in jujitsu when you're getting choked out is that you know where to go in advance like you can you know you've you've used the analogy of chess with me before where you can think three or four moves and you can look into the the board and see things that the opponent can't see because you have the the knowledge and the experience and it seems to me that that knowledge and experience does that add to the faith does that add to the belief or or does the faith and belief just come by itself and then you you add the knowledge and experience along the way what it, um i wouldn't think that it has to the, the the knowledge of that I think it adds to the belief because so many times I've been able to survive that and I've been convincing myself and, and trusting that the last minute it's going to work, that is almost a habit. I go to sometimes I go to, to you know, go out with my wife, uh, Sylvia, and the place is packed. There's no parking spot. And she said, you know, and as we're getting close to the arena or the event or whatever it is, a restaurant, and you know it's already parked and it's already filled up. And she says, well, why don't we park here and just walk? I said, no, I'm sure there's a parking spot at the front. What do you mean there's a parking spot? I don't know, come, let's go see it. Just get in there, and lo and behold, and people are just driving is, out, right? and boom, I just walk in. So I have been very fortunate in just pu pushing my luck in terms of I know something good is going to happen. I'm just kind of, my mind is just so accustomed to trust that things are going to work right. You just push it, push it, push it. Before you know it, boom, miracles just happen. I'm kind of almost relying on the miracle nowadays. So when you rely on the miracle, does that give you the, is that part of what gives you the ability to relax? Yes. Instead of having the struggle? Yes. The real, you know, that's right. I know it's going to happen. And again, if there's no solution, it's solved. I can, you know, worrying about things makes no difference. Worrying about anything does not help. You know, and what was the last time that you had an issue or a problem and that you're so worried about that helped the solution. Oh, it, it never, never helps. It never yeah. helps. It makes if, it worse. If, yeah, sure. if one thing happens, it makes it worse. Now, if the solution is uh, achievable or not achievable, it has nothing to do with you worrying about it. It's, you know, the attitude, and I don't know if it's a Brazilian attitude that goes part of it, mm -hmm. into it, um, uh, is, it's, it's always fascinating to me. I remember I was driving down uh, Pier Avenue just over here uh, uh, one day, and I saw your younger brother, Hoist, was out in the street, and I said, hey, Hoist, and I waved to him. And he's, he, he, he said hello, and I pulled the car over, and I was kind of talking to him, but I was in the middle of the street. Somebody came up behind me just nailing on their horn. And he's like, hey, relax, man. We're at the beach. Relax. And it's, <laughs> I love the attitude because I, 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 I get it from your entire family. From, you know, it's just this relaxed attitude of, you know, and the, this person's nailing their horn, and they're so uptight. And here he was amongst everything just being relaxed. And I see that that's the same attitude that you bring to to life when we have conversations, and to, to fights when you have people challenging you. Yes. It, I, 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 there's, there's a secret there, and uh, boy, if we could transmit that secret to everybody, I think that uh, they'd be more successful in business and life. I don't think that we were put on this earth to fail. Each one of us has a mission in here. Each one of us had the capability to do very well at something. And uh, I'm a, a man of a lot of faith. I don't go to church, but I have a lot of faith in God and in myself. I, and uh, if one believes that when things happen in your life, it's just a test to see how you handle that kind of situation. And if you understand that and you know you're being tested, you can take the, the, the wrong road and just do the crazy thing. A lot of people out there have no money to buy food. And for their wife and children, and they out of desperation, they get a gun and go rob a 7-Eleven or you know rob a bank or whatever it is. But if they didn't do that, that would not be the end of the world. If they have faith that something would happen right after that, I'm sure that thing, something would happen. So the option of getting the gun and robbing a 7-Eleven is not the best option. So people are always going to be put in a difficult situation, and no matter what, how much money you have or how much money you don't have. What you have in life or what you don't have, it doesn't matter. Life is a test for all of us. That's the way I see it. So when I find myself bumping into a situation that is a very difficult problem here, worrying does not solve the problem for me. So I think, wait a minute, this was put in my, in my front of me for a reason. I have the, 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 the confidence that all bad things happen for a good reason. If something horrible happens, that was, that was a message in there for me. That's the way I see it. The glass is almost, all, I mean, it's always half full. It's never half empty, you know what I'm saying? That's the approach I take. And, and fortunately, I was able to grow up with that concept. Did you learn that from your father? Was that Absolutely, of, yes. Yeah. My dad was a very positive kind of guy. He just, you know, told me that all my life. And he was a living example of that, you know. And hopefully, I can, I guess, 
pass the same information to my kids and make them understand that. There was something that happened, you know, a while back, and people were a little concerned at the academy. What about this and what about that? And somebody said something to the boys, and I think Hannah said, you know what? If my dad is not worried, I'm not going to worry. <laughs> so, you know, eventually, of course, we got this thing through, and life went on, and everything worked out great. But, um, you know, we're here to, make, to be successful, all of us, one way or the other. Some people see success as being rich, having money on the bank. I almost had the, the bad habit of seeing success as life itself, as, life, as a lifestyle, because with the prestige and the recognition, the fame and the name that we grew up having in Brazil, uh, we have things that a lot of wealthy people don't have. The kind of wealth I have, you know, is not financial wealth, you know, to, to some multi-billionaire's uh, standards, but it's the kind of thing that money can't buy. You know, the prestige and the friends that we find through jiu-jitsu and so on, it's, you know, I went, I think I mentioned that to you, I went to teach a seminar one time in Albuquerque, and I landed in, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I landed in Albuquerque, and I had to take a car, a drive away, uh, a rental car, to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I spent a whole week teaching classes there, and on the last day, I had a 12 o'clock flight out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, uh, and I, pro I told myself, I'm going to finish the class in San Jose at 10, so I can drive one hour drive back to Albuquerque, and then get at the airport one hour before the flight, and everything should be fine. But when we finished the class at 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday, the students, I want to take a picture with you, and a question, and this, and that, and the whole thing, and buy one more thing, and whatever. So the, the, the goodbye period lasted 40 minutes. So by the time I got ready to get in the car and leave, time was gone. Right? Time was gone. It was 20 minutes to 11. So I said, gosh, I'm in trouble now. I mean, I have to take a 12 o'clock flight, and it's a one-hour drive. And, uh, you know, like, what am I going to do? So a couple of the guys were in class. It was a, a seminar for the, uh, for the, to the reserve, you know, to the military reserve, not reserve, to the uh, National Guard. And they had some policemen that came from Albuquerque, drove to be part of the seminar. So I have a couple of SWAT guys say, listen, don't worry, we will give you a police escort back. Oh, <laughs> so I have me and Hiro, it was teaching the seminar with me, in a rental car. And I had a police SWAT car in front of me, <laughs> another one behind me. I turned the emergency lights just to make it official on the rental car. And we are going down 110 miles on the freeway. And those guys just saying, hey, move over for the people in the freeway. We made it back in 25 minutes with no traffic at 100 miles an hour. And those guys just, you know, helped me out. Hey, hold on, how is that? I said, perfect. Thank you very much. You got to the airport at 11.05. I made the flight. Everything was great. So, you know, it's whatever. Things will always work. One way or the other, they always work out. So <laughs> now, now, you said something about discipline as well. How, how, would you, um, how would you say that the discipline of perfecting the techniques in jiu-jitsu, how, how, how does that map across to, to life? How does that map across to business? What is, how, how, how is that discipline so important to somebody in, in business and life? Well, in order to fine-tune your techniques, you know that, you have to practice the technique a certain way, and then we're going to do it again and again and again. And you must have the discipline to repeat that same technique countless times over and over so they become a conditioned reflex. Because if you're sloppy and you practice different time, I mean, different te uh, the same technique in different ways, you will not develop the reflex. So the ability, the patience, and the discipline, and the commitment to do that same thing over and over and over exactly the same way because if you don't take the discipline to do that way, it's not going to come out right. right. Especially if you're the, fast, the, the fight is happening in a fast pace and you don't have time to think about it, you must develop a reflex so that you can respond exactly right. The discipline is a must. And I'm sure in business, one has to have the discipline to wake up early, to call the clients a certain way, to follow the guidelines of your program, or like any other people's program. You have to have the discipline and say, you know what, I don't want to listen to music, I want to listen to this. Because I can gain more by listening to Chris's instructional video on my car than I can by listening to some music. That's discipline right there. It's sometimes more comfortable to listen to music, but if you realize that the discipline of listening to that CD can prepare you, can educate you, can get you ready, because you have to listen to, to the thing a certain amount of times to develop the reflexes, you know that. The same way you train your techniques, you have to listen to the audio information a certain amount of times. So the discipline of doing that over and over and over, that's what gets you ready. So how do you, because what you've been exquisite at is transferring this knowledge to your, to your boys and to your family. Um, and you guys are really, uh, it amazes me how you're able to, to transfer not just the knowledge, not just the mm -hmm. techniques, but the attitude. And if you, you transfer the attitude of a, of a winner, of a champion, which would include having that faith, having that belief that something's going to come through, which would include being relaxed in difficult situations, which would also include that discipline. How have you been so effective at teaching your boys that? Because I know there's a lot of parents that would love 
to have, you know, to, to instill values such as that in their children. Example is not the best way to educate your kids. It's the only way to educate your kids. I learned that from the old man. I used to love watching him teach classes, and I love him. He just being part of it because he, was, he went out of his way to set a good example, which was amazing. He just did not live his life. He lived his life concerned about the, what kind of example I'm giving for my kids, me and my brothers. And then do you think about that, too? Do you think about what example yes. you do by the way you Absolutely. Yeah. I have to. You know, I think every parent owes that to their kids. I can't be telling my kids how bad cigarette is if I'm lighting a cigarette in front of my kids. Don't show them smoke, kid. You're too young. Don't do that. And if I'm lighting a cigarette, it's a horrible thing to do. So I'm sure that my father gave up a lot of pleasures, a lot of fun things in his life because he was aware of how that would impact the kids. And as a result of that, I do the same thing with my kids. You know, fun for me is teaching jiu-jitsu, is playing with them, is going out to the beach and having a healthy lifestyle because I want to imprint that on their subconscious and the same thing on the diet and there's no you know beer in my refrigerator and there's no coca-cola in my refrigerator it's always a good stuff the healthy the apples and the fruits and this and that and they learn that and once they learn that and just realize the benefits of it and then you know it goes with that that's kind of uh, you know that's unseen mm -hmm. as um, as a student I mean it, 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 it's as you explain it now it's it's very obvious that you live your life in a way where you are an, ex an exquisite example of, of what you want to uh, pass on to your students, um, but as I've as I've studied from you, as I've trained with you, what I've really uh, grown to appreciate is your knowledge of the art, your ability to transfer that information. Those are the things that are evident. What's not evident, uh, what and now you're making evident, is how you show up as a person and who you are as a person and your character, and 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 how you're able to transmit that to the people around you. And that's uh, it's admirable. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it, it really is. And as a as a teacher, I think there's something to be learned there. And I always tell people in our programs that if you're not in business, in business, if you're not teaching, the business is dying because you have to teach the people, teach the employees and whatnot. And I think that um, uh, this is another one of those uh, components of the secret hmm. that uh, really make you so exquisite as a teacher, but also that a business person can carry out into their business and, and use to grow their business Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. The, the character, how they show up. Um, are there any other um, things that really stand out in your mind as being um, traits or things that, um, that, things that you learned from jujitsu that make life better? Um, it's hard for me to think separate from jujitsu, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Everything I do has related to jujitsu. It's like, I don't know life without jujitsu. I've been doing it from so, such an early age that uh, I really can't think of something like, you know, just, it's everything for me. I mean, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's the discipline. It's the commitment. It's, it's the willingness to, and the drive and the desire to help someone, you know? And, uh, what about the confidence? You mentioned confidence before. I heard you uh, say that on, on stage. Um, the confidence that it gives you. What, um, how does that map across? What do you, what do you think? Well, it's, it's interesting if you go in a room that you feel that you can't physically get beat up by anybody. Changes everything. Changes the way you show up. Changes. Changes the way you feel, the way you relate to people. You know, the average person, if you're physically intimidated by someone, you, you know, you talk to the person a certain way, but that person might have an edge on you just because you're intimidated by them. If you look at the average individual and see him as a five-year-old child, it changes everything. Your ability to negotiate with that person, your ability to, to talk to him and, and hear some things that he might say that could be offensive, but it's not because you can, you know, you can be very tolerant, you can be very understanding. The physical approach to it, the physical uh, demystification, I guess, is a word that I'm trying to use here. It's important because it puts you in a position that you, you can be very fair on your judgment. If a little kid comes to you and say offensive things to you, you're going to say, wow, the, the, kid, the parents don't teach this kid manners. Oh, honey, it's okay. You don't ignore it. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's okay. You, you, it doesn't hurt you because you're a little child. You know, you look and say, wow, how come somebody doesn't teach this kid manners is one thing. But if an adult comes to you and say the same thing, it could be a threat. It could be a very offensive remark. Like you said the other day, you're driving somebody honking their horn. You're like, hey, come on. You know? So if you have the ability, because of your physical prowess that you acquire through jiu -jitsu, to look at an individual who's very angry at you, is very upset, and is about to threaten you, and you see that guy without letting yourself get intimidated or threatened by that, your ability to deal with that individual is completely different. I love that because 
that's something that I've noticed in my life uh, due to by you know being in martial arts and stuff. It changes your mindset. And people say, well, you walk differently. Why, why, tell, tell exactly. Me, yeah. Yeah. Do you hear that a lot? People say the, yeah. the way you carry yeah, I, I remember I, you told I, me I a story. I don't want you to walk, but that's about it. <laughs> you told me a story one time about the uh, the guy on the beach with the football. What was... Um, yes. Could you, could you uh, share that story? Well, of course. I had, uh, I had a couple of my kids with me on the beach on a Sunday morning. It was completely empty. There was nobody on the beach. So I set the towels and the toys and whatever, and I'm playing on the sand with the kids. And uh, just us, nobody else. And suddenly four guys, late 20s or something, strong, buffed up guys, uh, they bring their towel and stuff and set it up about 10 feet from where I was. <clears throat> and then they start throwing a football to each other, tossing a football. And of course I thought to myself, how inconsiderate, you know? Yeah, these four guys see me with a couple of kids and they, of all the place we have, the whole completely empty beach, they put the stuff right next to me and toss the football, of course, you know, they're going to end up hitting us with the ball, you know. As I'm thinking this, one of the guys running back and catch the ball right over my head. Exactly as I predicted. So I'm sitting on the sand. I looked up and I said, hey, be careful that you don't hit the kids with the ball. And he looked at me, you know, looked at the kids, said, don't worry. I'm not going to hit the kids. I might hit you, but I'm not going to hit the kids. <laughs> I said to him, if you hit me, I'll hit you back. And he said, what? What did you say, man? You want to go down by the water, spill a little blood? I stood up very close to him, and I said, sure, let's go down by the water, spill a little blood. And I spoke in that same friendly, you know, tone, a very casual. I thought he was kind of caught by surprise on that. I was close enough not to give him the space to get ready to punch or anything like that. I, w I was kind of within his space, if you know what I mean. I was closer than this. So if he tried to do anything, I, was, I could easily jump and, and control the man. But he wasn't quite sure because of my attitude how to behave at that point. And then he was kind of surprised and said, are you armed? And I said, no, <laughs> this is it, you know, shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, are you a boxer? Are you a Cuban boxer? Because the Cubans are supposed to be very tough boxers. They don't want to die in Cuba, so they come here. They're supposed <laughs> to be, you know, very gutsy guys. I said, it doesn't matter. And he said to me, uh, I was a boxer myself, and I did some fights, and then I got hurt, and I had to stop. And he's now kind of studying me because I handled the thing so casually. So the so whole friendly. demeanor changed. The whole thing. Yeah. Started, yeah. He said, how many kids do you have, and do you come here often? I say, and then I said, it doesn't matter how many kids I have, man. And he said, looked at his friends. I said, those guys are pretty big, aren't they? Pointed to his friends who are now playing the ball a little further down. I said, yeah, the bigger the guy, the better workout you get. <laughs> he looked at me a little confused and said, well, you know, um, how many kids you have? I said, listen, if you want to go down by the water, roll a little bit, I'll be glad to do that with you. But if you don't, do me a favor, play the ball far away so you don't hit the kids. All right, man, okay, okay, and walked away. It was the end of that. So thanks to jiu-jitsu, I didn't have to fight. If I did not know jiu-jitsu, a lot of people don't know jiu-jitsu, they might have also faced that situation. But they might not have the level of comfort that I had in dealing with that kind of situation. In Brazil, we say that every tough guy dies on the hand of the wimp. Every tough guy eventually crosses the line, makes a joke or, a, or an improper remark to someone's girlfriend or wife, and the wimp, in order not to get beat up by the big guy, what does he do? Pulls a gun and shoots and kills the guy. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fear is a form of intelligence. Fear is a form of intelligence. You're not quite sure about the outcome, so you, I don't know if I can beat this guy or not, so I'm gonna be afraid. It's okay, it's okay to protect yourself. It's a natural instinct. Now, what Jiu-Jitsu gave me under that example I just showed you, I just told you, is that it gave me the confidence not to be intimidated by the guy's big size and his attitude and his you know, demeanor, say, hey, what do you wanna go fight? Sure, let's go, what's the big deal? So I looked at him as I was looking at a little kid. So he was surprised by that. And thanks to Jiu-Jitsu, I didn't have to fight. The whole situation was, was uh, controlled and diffused in a very humane way. And the whole thing was over. So uh, you, you know what's interesting to me about that is that it was, once again, it was your, your knowledge and experience with Jiu-Jitsu that allowed you to uh, be very calm in that situation, but also your faith and your belief. So it seems to me that the kind of the knowledge and the experience go hand in hand with the faith and belief. And yes. If I was looking to map that across to, to business and business strategy, uh, what that would mean to me is that the more you learn about business and the more mentors you find and the guides that you find and then, then you have the strategies, you know where to go strategically, um, coupled with the, the faith and belief is... Uh, the more prepared you're gonna be to deal with any situation. For sure, yeah, Absolutely, so, yeah. all right, yeah, so I, I see it, some of it is attitude, and then some of it's knowledge and experience, and it's, and the two hand in hand really make for a powerful combination in terms of winning. Absolutely. In, in business and life. And when you have those, they raise your level of faith. 
I think I'm getting more daring, hoping for the parking lot in the end, because I've seen so many of those that I say, you know what, I'm going to find a parking spot, and that's what it is. You know, it's just the more you have the experience and the know-how, and like as they said, that they go hand in hand, you start trusting your capabilities more and more. You're becoming more bold, and you say, you know what, it's going to happen, it's, and that kind of thing. You start counting on the on the miracle, like I say. Now, what, there's something else that you taught me along the way that um, I really appreciated, and it was. You know, I remember at one point, I, I even talk about this in some of my seminars, where um, I was going in and the purple belts were beating me up, and, you know, I was always tapping out, and you told me, don't worry, don't, don't be afraid to tap. Just ask them, how did you do that, so you don't have to tap that way again. And, and you told me, you, you set me out, and you said, okay, whatever you do, when you go roll, don't win. Just go and, and tap, and then ask them how they did it. And then pretty soon, that would take away the, the fear of losing. Right. And I thought that was such a wonderful lesson. And I mean, there's so many people in life that are afraid of losing. And so they fight and they struggle. What are your thoughts on that? There was, uh, there was, uh, there's people that believe that success, you know, to, to reach success faster, you have to increase your rate of failure. Isn't that something like this? Edison or something Fail like that. Fail forward, yeah. Fail forward, you know what I'm saying? You make a hundred, find a thousand different ways not to be able, I mean, not to, the, the lamp would not work. And eventually, the last one was the one that worked. So, you know, if you increase your rate of failure, failure eventually you're going to get to success. Eventually you're going to cover all the grounds. And then when I recommended that to you, is because, you know, you're going to roll with someone and the guy's better than you. It's okay, he lost, but let's do it again and then catch it again. And then before you know it, you're going to start getting the information of what happened. And now the next time it happens, you're going to get a hang of it. And then the next time, you just keep covering all the little patches. You cover little, little holes. Before you know it, what he used to catch you with, it's no longer available because you've learned. And that's what the bottom line is. I mean, you keep learning from your mistakes. Failing is no wrong. Nothing wrong with that. It's a shame. It's when you fail something, and then you think it's the end of the world. That's and people the do that all the time. And people do that all the time, yeah. you know. Now, so. business, I mean, uh, I mean, you could look at that as... Uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways that uh, I know that I've failed in business, or it, and I don't really think of them as failures. And maybe, I don't That's know, right. if you, is it a failure to tap out? Or Absolutely is it not, yeah. It's just, you're part of the learning process. Part of the you're learning getting, process. You're getting better for the next time. And actually, what you taught me was to enjoy tapping out. That's at that, right. At that point. Yeah, yeah. don't put yourself with the pre uh, on the distress of worrying, up, you know, because it's your ego that says, gosh, I lost. It's no big deal. You know what I'm saying? There's always somebody better. You know what I'm saying? There's always somebody that this guy who catch you today, and he's going to be losing to somebody else tomorrow, and you catch me today, and tomorrow somebody else. It's, it's no big deal. It's a learning process. And I used to tell students that if you run a marathon, and you make it in, two hour, in three hours, and the next time you run the marathon, if you make it in two hours and 59 minutes, you're doing great. It doesn't matter as if you win. Improving. As long as yes. If you're as long, it doesn't matter if you win the marathon or not. You're just getting better now than you were before. And that's, you know, matches exactly what you're saying. The more information you have, the more people you have teaching you the tricks. And if you can assimilate that stuff little by little, better for you. How about challenging yourself? What do you think, um, what about, you know, always increasing mm -hmm. the challenge? Because I know in business, you know, the, like I'll, I'll, I'll make something happen in business mm -hmm. and it's like, uh, what's, what, how, do, how do I expand? And if I'm going to expand in business, I have to take on greater challenges. How, how do you think about that in, in, in jujitsu terms? Well, not only in the terms, but, you know, to find somebody who is tougher. You know, there's an opposition. There's always somebody tougher out there, for sure. But is that uh, important to do? It's important to do to an extent, yeah, sure, absolutely, because when you find somebody better, it's, it, help, it forces you to get better. You know, every time you find somebody who's tougher, what you shouldn't do is let the loss for somebody make you put you down. If right. you can find somebody and the guy's tough and you win, if you don't find somebody else better, you start thinking that you reached the top and that's the end of that. So I'm continuously challenging myself. Maybe not so much on the mat these days sure. because the boys are tough too much. <laughs> you, when you're teaching your sons, do you teach them to go out and find the people that are better and, and, and challenge themselves in that way? Yes, that, uh, yes, absolutely. They have to be training because I'm, I'm convinced, I'm telling them that they expect the next guy to be tougher all the time. You know? And uh, my father used to tell us growing up that if we're in a match and if we win the match, we get $5. If you lose the match, he would give us 10 bucks. And the analogy is, when you lose the match or when you fail, if you think about it, you have much more to learn at that point. If you win, eh, I won, I'm the best, I don't have to do anything else, you don't grow. Growth is part of the growth is when you really say, hey, I love, what, did I, what could I have done better? 
And the way to see what you could have done better is if you lose, then you can somebody to say, hey, do it this way better so that you can keep on improving. Uh, you know, somebody told me a, a metaphor that uh, maps across to that. They talk about when you're, <coughs> if you're looking to grow your muscles, you, you, you push to the point of failure, and it's only when pushing to the point of failure that, the, that you actually get the growth that, that occurs. So it yeah. relates directly to that. Um, now, I had, a, I had a great question, something I was thinking. Uh, um, in terms of, there's one other thing that I wanted to ask you, um, breathing. Breathing, because you, you, you taught me a lot about breathing along the way. Do you map that across in life somehow? Because I think that that's a lesson. When, you, boy, when, you, when, you, when we were rolling and you say, boy, Chris, always breathe, breathe, and you taught me to breathe out, um, you know, to remind myself to, to inhale. Um, and I look at that and I go, boy, there's, that's something that could be mapped across in life where if people would just think about that in stressful situations, you certainly see that in jiu-jitsu when people are rolling that they'll stop yes, breathing. Yes, for sure. Every time you yeah. start using too much strength, you have a tendency to, if you have to push the refrigerator, you go, <laughs> and you start doing that, and that's kind of, you know, it's not the, smart way, it's the smartest way to do it. And uh, what you should do, I think, is related to what your question is, is you're going to be finding yourself in difficult situations. More often than not, a stressful situation is not a real short span, 30-second thing as it is a moving jiu-jitsu. It's a, it's a week long, it's a day long, it's a, it's a situation that you have to deal with for a while. So you can't just hold your breath all that. But if you can remind yourself that even during that stressful situation, it's important to kind of walk away, take a walk on the beach, cool off, allow yourself the time to, to get some fresh air, fresh ideas into your mind, that would be the breathing approach that I would recommend. You know what I'm saying? If you yes, have a, like a major something going on, the guy's slapping a lawsuit on you or, or you had your major ex, stop everything, step out of this, clear your mind, and then come back and look at this whole thing with a fresh new spare of eyes. And I think that's a huge, a like very that. helpful thing too, because I've, I find myself sometimes, you know, when the business for whatever reason that I've been involved with, the thing gets very complicated. I say, you know what, I'm off. Tell everybody I'm gone, I'm going to the beach, and just kick back and come back and say, wait, Things are not as bad as I thought it was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, and, and there's another piece to that too. And that you know, you hear your father fought a, a three-hour and forty-minute fight. And when you look at the the whole psychology that you have in jujitsu, which is that you're, you're you're fighting for the long run, and it's not you know we see in sport uh, either sport jujitsu or we see in the Ultimate Fighting Championship or cage fights nowadays where they have the time limits and you know there's this short span that people are going and training for. Your whole philosophy is patience and being in for the long haul and having the, being able to relax at the right times so that you have the energy to last the distance. And I think there's something about that metaphor that maps across to life as well because people will, will struggle, 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 just like they'll struggle. Uh, you, I, I, I know this because you've said it before. That people will struggle and use up all their energy and expend themselves very, very quickly in a fighting situation to where they've got no energy and they're depleted and then, uh, then that's the time where a, a good jiu-jitsu fighter would will win the fight. Will win the fight because yeah. they've because they've paced themselves right. And there's a lot of people that don't pace themselves in life. What do you what do you think about that business in life? Uh, again, I think that uh, one has to be ready to understand that the whole uh, road of success is just a, it's a it's a process. You know, you don't have to make it today. You don't have to make it tomorrow. It's just the way you deal with that on a daily basis is the trick. Um, a lot of people, like I said before, they see themselves as, I need to get the money now because if I don't have the now, life is horrible. They, the money it is or, or, a, or a relationship, they need to get that accomplished right now. It's much better if you can take your time, let it happen, stretch it out, and just take a little bit of time. Be comfortable with each step along the way. Don't rush the process. Don't tell yourself it has to be done right now. Things will happen in time, not necessarily when you want, but when the time for them to happen uh, arrives. You know what I'm saying? I might be as hung, you know, crazy hungry, but if the banana is green, I'm not eating it. The banana is going to get ripe, and then when the banana is ripe, that's when I'm going to eat the banana. You know what I'm saying? So I don't care how hungry I am. I'm not going to eat a green banana. So the bottom line is you, know, you have to give time to things, you know, for things to happen. We sometimes want to impose the, the time, limits, time limits on yeah. the things that you want to happen. It's not like this. You just have to give it time and just let it happen and keep doing the right thing, push on the right direction. Before you know it, you'll come, you know, it just will happen. So what do you, I'm, I'm just curious, what are you most proud about in your life? Um, gosh, I think, it's the, I think it's the kids I have. You have great kids. Right? I think it's my kids. I think it's, I'm very proud of that. I'm, I don't plan on dying anytime soon, but if I <laughs> die tomorrow, I know, that, I know that my father was very happy and proud of what I have, how far I have carried the torch of jiu-jitsu, the torch of jiu-jitsu. And I feel the same way. If I had to die tomorrow, I know that Gracie Jiu Jitsu would be in good hands. And, and what, do you, what do you look when you look at the, the future of Jiu Jitsu and the future of where it's going to go with your, 
with your kids because I think they're, they're carrying the torch. What do you, what do you see? What's, what's um, you know, now, right now we're launching this program. I see so many kids, so many things right now happening, Chris. I, you know, I talked about this, you know, the going through television projects we're involved with. And I see the greasy diet being taught in a much larger scale than it is now. Like I mentioned to you, uh, jiu-jitsu is an extremely important thing in our lives. But uh, the diet is one thing that I would consider more important than jujitsu. And I think that I am right now setting up a good foundation of credibility, of uh, recognition for the Gracie name, so that eventually I'm going to develop a project to educate the masses, not only in terms of only how to defend themselves effectively so that they can become more confident about themselves, but also teaching the mass of how to eat better. Because if they can have a healthier life, then it's like, you know, it's, it's the ultimate uh, <laughs> combination, you know, being mens sana and corpore sana, a Latin word that says a healthy mind and a healthy body. So if you can have the ability to defend yourself and, and be able to deal with the headaches and the, and the difficulties that one might have in life and business and all that while having a healthy life, because when you have a healthy life, you have a healthy body, you can really perform more. You can become more confident that everything is going to work out. It's just amazing how that combination of having a healthy life and, and the, the ability to, to trust yourself that you can do anything and the sky's the limit is just it's a very interesting uh, position to be in. Well, you've converted me to the Gracie diet, so I need, uh, <laughs> Good. I need it. Uh, traveling so much and stuff. Yes. It's, um, Plus, I want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're a young guy now, and you have many years of success ahead of you. And uh, God forbid, you know, it would be, not be a nice thing to see you, you know, not feeling very healthy. So the best advice I can give you is definitely look into this kind of thing and so I can get choked out by you for many years to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your My time. My pleasure. Thank awesome. you very much. Yeah. This is great. <laughs>